Welcome back again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Uh, there's a WBA cruiserweight title fight, which I think um, is sort of floating under the radar. It could be a good one. Uh, the styles tend to gel, I think, will gel very, very well. And that's between um, Arsene Gulamarian, who's a champion, WBA champion, and Gilberto Zerdo Ramirez. Now, let's talk a bit about Gulamarian, because he is the sort of unfashionable figure in the cruiserweight division. Like I say, he's a WBA champ. He actually won it back in 2018, so it was a long time ago. And he won it against... Um, None other than uh, Ryad Mary. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, M E R H Y is Mary. Ryad Mary. Anyway, Mr. Mary, um, he is probably best known for actually his last fight where he beat Tony Yoka on a split decision over 10 rounds. Um, prior to that, he lost a 12 round decision to Kevin Lorena. So he's, he's a pretty decent European level fighter. Um, and he's actually. He's actually scheduled to fight um, Jared Anderson, I think. <laughs> so he's moved up to heavyweight, definitely moved up to heavyweight. Coming off the back of the Yoka fight, he's obviously got this big shot at, at Anderson, who's the you know much much fancied uh, American prospect. But getting back to Gulamarian, um, Gulamarian won the he won the fight. He stopped Ray Murray in uh, eleven rounds, um, and since then, I mean, he hasn't been active. He did make. Uh, one defence in 2018, two in 2019. And then I think because of COVID and all that crap, um, he was out of the ring. He didn't he didn't fight again until 2022. Um, and since then, he hasn't fought. So, I mean, that, that he's, he's inactive. Basically, he's inactive. But that's probably why he's held that belt for so long. I think he's made about five defences. And probably Rayad Mary is the best opponent or the most well-known opponent. Probably, yeah, probably the best opponent on Goulamarian's... Um, Resume. Now, stylistically, I mean, he's he's an orthodox fighter. He's about six one, six one half, maybe six two. Um, he's got a very uncomplicated style. He comes forward, slowish feet, but he does cut the ring off relatively well. At least he has against these sort of B minus level fighters, and he won't throw a lot of punches until he's in range. He'll, he'll jabs quite well. He's not a pure slugger. He's definitely a pressure fighter, but there's no sort of slugging goes on. So he'll come in with the jab. And then once he gets you where he wants you, on the ropes, for example, he'll, he'll unload. He'll unload. I mean, his fight with um, Kane Watts, the Australian, who I, I think at the time was, I think he was about 37 at the time. He was, he was no spring chicken. I mean, it was a mismatch, really. That was a defence that I saw. Um, I think I watched that on YouTube. It might still be on there. But Kulimeria knocked out Watts with a body punch, one single body punch, Um so he can mix his work up, you know, but once he gets you in range, once he gets you where he wants you, he will let his hands go and they are hurtful punches. He's not really a one punch banger. Um, his record is 27 wins, no draws, no defeats. He's got 19 KOs, but he is very good, very effective at putting on the pressure and he, t he, he paces himself very well. Like I say, he doesn't waste punches. He hides behind the jab, bang, bang, nice high guard, nothing complicated about his style. It's a real sort of meat and potatoes, you know, European style. But when he gets you where he wants you, he'll let his hands go a lot, body to head, head to body. Um, and he's physically extremely strong, extremely strong. Now, Gilberto Ramirez, Zerdo, that rarest of things, a big Mexican fella. He's about 6'3", I think he's 6'2 and a half, 6'3", taller than Gulamarian. Um, Southpaw. Um, comes in with 45 wins, 30 KOs, only one defeat. And the def the defeat came a couple of fights ago against Dimitri Bivol at 175. A lot of people were picking Zerdo to beat Bivol. I, I wasn't one of them. I thought Bivol would win on points, which he did. I thought he had too much skill for Zerdo. Zerdo unbelievably started his, his professional career as a 168-pound guy. Uh, God only knows how he made that weight because he's bloody huge. Even at 175, he, he looked massive. Um, and he had this great, long, unbeaten run. I mean, at 168, um, he fought, what was the guy's name? Jesse Hart, twice. I think he won two decisions, two 12-round decisions. That was at 168. And they were good fights. They were good fights. He had, he had Hart down. That was for the WBO super middleweight title. 
but he couldn't keep him there. Hart's a good fighter, actually. Very good fighter. I don't think he's ever been stopped. He's got 30 wins and three defeats, and all three defeats are um, points, you know, and he give, he'll give anyone a good fight. Um, and, you know, he, Zerdo, um, when he moved up to 175, he beat Tommy Carpensi in four rounds. I think he retired after four, and Sullivan Barrera got stopped in four. Um, but he's also got wins, knockout wins, stoppage wins in the later rounds. There's a couple of times he's he stopped the guy in the tenth round. So he's so like Gulamarian, he's got a very good gas tank, and he's a big, physically strong guy. Now his last fight was his only fight at cruiser, and he beat Joe Smith Jr. Another guy who was coming up from light heavy. I wasn't overly impressed, to be honest with you. I thought he beat Smith. Smith got done in two rounds by Baturbiev. Zerdo was coming off of con- conclusive points to, uh, defeat to Bivol. So both these guys, former 175 pounders coming up. Um, and yeah, Zerdo won it, but I mean, he won it wide. I think, I think, I think all three judges had it. They could maybe gave a round to Smith and that was it. Um, the question is, can he bring his physicality, his physical presence up to cruiserweight and compete against a guy who's fought his whole career at cruiserweight. Now, Gulamarian is a big, strong lump, a tough guy, tough guy. Isn't it hard with one punch, but he'll put them together very well. The thing about Gulamarian is he's only, this is the first time he's been out, out of France, because I should have mentioned earlier he's actually French, or he's based in France anyway. I think this is the first time he's been out of France for many years. I think he fought twice in Germany in his early on in his career and the rest of it's been in France. So he's going over to the U S and I think the promoters, um, are actually kind of trying to, of, they're thinking we've bought his title because we'll bring him over. We'll get him bashed up. By the way, this is a golden boy promotion. I should point that up, put point that out. We'll bring him over. We'll get his title. And then that'll give Zerdo a belt, um, and a good bargaining chip for maybe a fight with upper tire or, you know, unifications, undisputed and all that. But, Ramirez, although he is physically extremely strong, the question is, how is he going to get on with a guy who might just be equally as physically strong and has spent his whole career at cruiserweight? Now, Ramirez hits hard, but I wouldn't say at this particular way, he's a one-punch banger. Um, He'll hurt you. He'll grind you down. And I see both these guys, this is... Neither of them is going to take a backward step. I can't believe one of them is going to try and outbox the other. They're going to be coming forward, looking. It's going to be a battle of wills, a battle of you know a southpaw Zerdo. He'll probably throw more punches early. Um, Gulamarian will try and drain a bit, you know, draw his sting a little bit, take a bit of. Uh, he'll, he'll have that high guard which he always has. Try and soak it up, maybe sample the power, and then he'll go to work after about three or four rounds. And I see this developing in the middle rounds into a real war. A real war. <laughs> you watch; it'll be boring as hell. Now that I've said that, <laughs> but I think uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to stick my neck out. I think it'll be a war. I think um, Zerdo. I see him firing more punches, but the the more educated, the more sensible punches are probably going to come from Gulamarian. Don't get me wrong; Zerdo can Zerdo can fight. I mean, can box. I should say. He can, we know they they can both fight. Um, and but the lack of of cruiserweight um, experience for Zerdo makes me wonder. Makes me wonder how he's going to get on against the champion. And uh, Gulamarian is is a good rather than great champion, but he's done his whole career at, at cruiser. Uh, there's also the question: How will he travel to to the states? Will he get on with that? Um, some people don't travel well, especially if they've spent nearly all their career in one country. Um, like I say, I think it will develop into a war. Obviously, it's a 12-rounder because it's a world title fight. By about the fifth round, sixth round, they'll be exchanging a lot of blows. It'll be a battle of wills. Who can put the pressure on better? I can see a few cuts going in there because neither man is particularly hard to find with punches, but they both got good jaws. Um, at least Zerdo's had a good jaw at lower weights. He looks big enough to take a good wallop from a cruiser, but of course you don't want to hang your, your chin out. Um, I see... I see Zerdo either stopping Gulamarian late on his feet. I don't think he'll knock him out, but it st- might stop him on his feet. Kind of 
having to walk through a bit of fire to do it, certainly, um, or winning a very close decision. And even if it's, even if it's got this hunch about Zerdo, I think the Southpaw stance might give Gulamarian a few problems as well. It's got a hunch he might stop him late. But there won't be much in it on the cards at the point of the stoppage. You know what I mean? It'll be a very competitive fight. If he doesn't do that, I see Zerdo winning a close decision, maybe a majority decision or something like that. Is he going to stop him? Possible. Certainly possible. Yeah, I'll go for late stoppage or close decision for Zerdo. I think Zerdo will win. I do like Gulamarian from what I've seen, but he hasn't proved it at the highest level. Zerdo's his best opponent. There again, you could say Gulamarian is Ramirez's best opponent. I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Um, who do you think is going to win? I think this could be a really good fight. And it, I always say this, but the most intriguing fights, the ones I do previews for are usually the ones that where I'm, I'm really struggling to pick a winner. But let me know who you think will win. Comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you could hit that subscribe button and also the like button if you like the if you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the hit the down button. Hit the <laughs> I don't mind, but if you want to support the channel and I I, I do appreciate it, I always appreciate your time. Um so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading your comments as always. So um let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. This is a big good one. Keep an eye out for it. It's on this Saturday, by the way, coming up. Take care of yourselves, bye for now.